son and his wife, Alice, bought a two-bedroom a few months ago. Of course, I was happy for them. But the joy did not last long. For soon after they moved into the new nest began to have problems. But let me tell you in order. Five years ago my son Zachar, who was 27 at the time, decided to get married. His chosen one Alice was four years younger. At that time she had just graduated from university and was looking for a job. Zachar lived with me. He bought a car before the marriage, but he did not buy a house. Can we live with you for a while? My son asked. Otherwise we won't be able to save for a mortgage until our old age. The course, live, I did not mind. Just as long as we got along with Alice. But Alice herself has convinced me that there will be no problem. It will be quiet. No noisy parties. My parents live in another city, not close. I only have one friend. I like cleanliness and comfort. And I like to cook too. We'll live here for a year or two, and then we'll move. I got a good job, too. So we'll start saving for a place to live. And indeed, Alice had no complaints about cleanliness and cooking. She could cook everything and bake delicious pies. The room was always clean, too. And Alice's friend was quiet and modest. As she came, they sat quietly, drank tea and talked. Sometimes I had tea with them too. But the terms of living together turned out to be a bit different than planned. A year later my son and his wife had a daughter. Because of this, it was extremely slow to raise money for the first payment. Of course, I did not think about kicking the young people out. Where else could they go? That's how we lived. Alyssa was on maternity leave, doing almost all the housework. I paid the rent and supplied everyone with food and household chemicals. Of course, my son bought something, too, he could stop by the store on his way home from work. But I didn't insist on it. It was better to set aside a penny for a place to live. Thank you for everything often said Alice. Without you, we would not have made it. Now such prices, and the baby needs so much stuff. And the car costs money. You have to pay the insurance, and repairs, and fuel. It's awful. My son needed the car for work, and he had no intention of parting with it. That's why I sometimes gave him some money for gas too. In general, I helped out in any way I could. The lion's share of our common family cauldron was mine, and no one argued with this. Six months ago Alice met me with sad news, her own uncle had passed away. Poor Uncle Pasha, she sobbed. He suffered a long time, the man had cancer, and came to our city a couple of times for medical tests. He stayed with us. He tried to fight the disease. But, the cancer was stronger. His wife divorced him as soon as she found out about the disease. And they had no children. The closest person to Pasha was his brother, Alyssa's father. He was the one whom Pavel left his apartment in his will. Sister-in-law said that Alyssa's parents decided to sell Uncle Paul's house and divide the money equally between the children Alyssa and her brother. Alyssa has an older brother, the same age as my Zachar. He rented an apartment in the same town where my sister-in-law's parents live. So my uncle solved the housing problem of the two families at once. Six months later Alice's father inherited and very quickly sold the apartment. By this time Alice had already gone to work. She and Zachar collected all the necessary certificates and applied to the bank. Almost half of the cost of the apartment was paid by them as a down payment. My son then heartily thanked me for my help. But my daughter-in-law's behavior was completely different she just stood there smiling. Minimal repairs had been made in the apartment and Alice and Zachar had left money for the necessary pieces of furniture. We could move in and live.